Police in Tenerife have announced a massive search operation for missing Jay Slater and are calling the volunteers to join in. Welcome back to the channel, this is Emma, your crime story is obsessed. We've been covering the Jay Slater case and apparently a former senior officer at the Metropolitan Police has said that he believes that Jay Slater has either plunged into a ravine accidentally, deliberately disappeared or has possibly been kidnapped. Now Jay Slater, who's 19 years of age, went missing in Tenerife last Monday, the 17th of June. He's from Lancashire and last spoke to his friend Lucy Law at around 8am. He told her that he had cut himself on a cactus, had very low battery, did not have anything to drink and was lost. But the police officer said that in these circumstances as first reported and in particular the last phone call he made using this information the most obvious theory is that Jay Slater became lost whilst trying to walk back through a remote and difficult area that was totally unknown to him. I've also heard that this was the first time he had been on holiday, not used to the terrain, the cactuses, the plants and the ravines. It's very difficult to actually search the whole area because it's, it's a vast area, uh, very mountainous, very steep, lots of dark shadow areas so there's a, and caves as well so it's very difficult to actually to search i think they focused along the road which is the last place that jay was seen uh, and then move further and further towards the ocean he may have fallen into a ravine the police officer said or something similar he may have injured himself and incapacitated himself this possibility leads to the searches that we have seen in recent days, focusing on the areas where his phone last pinged. But sadly, if this is the explanation, after such an extended period of time missing, without somebody helping him, it's very unlikely that Jay will be found. But the police will keep reviewing what they have done and moving on to the next likely area. A second possibility must be considered is that Jay deliberately disappeared. As we find out more about him, he said, it seems that he was somewhat of a checkered past, which may well have led to his disappearance. And the police will be pursuing lines of inquiry related to his background and domestic circumstances, you know, to identify if this is a viable possibility. This is an aspect of the investigation which the UK police will be far better placed to process. That the Spanish authorities have made contact with the Lancashire police with a request to assist in this regard. Now the third possibility that needs to be considered is that Jay was kidnapped or worse by another person. And this could be a spur of a moment thing arising from a spontaneous situation that has arisen or a pre-planned thing arising from a longer term conflict or dispute. Now we'd have to remember that not that long ago, Jay was given a suspended sentence, 150 hours of community service after him and his friends assaulted a man and put him in intensive care. The guy did survive, but it was the fact that this poor guy, whatever had happened between the gangs, was injured so severely. Now the police in Tenerife have called for more volunteers to take part in a mass search to comb the expanse of rocky wilderness where Jay Slater disappeared. And as the search for the apprentice bricklayer entered its 12th day, Tenerife police have urged those willing to volunteer to register to take part in a planned search on Saturday the rocky area close to where he went missing. Now, Tenerife Civil Guard Police Chief said that following the disappearance on the 17th of June of the 19-year-old British man, the Civil Guard is prepared to carry out a mass surge. Now, given that this area where he went missing is steep, rocky and full of uneven terrain with many ravines, tracks and trails, they said that they request the collaboration of all those volunteer associations that can help this planned search that is intended to be carried out 
in a directed and coordinated manner. The search will begin on Saturday the 29th of June at 9am and a meeting point will be established at the Mirador de la Cruz de Hilda in Masca. To start the search in a logical and orderly way along the many paths and ravines that were found in Masca. Now the Masca Gorge where the search is taking place has already been searched by police with dogs, helicopters and drones which turned up no trace of Jay. He is not the first person to disappear in the area and locals said it could take months for bodies of missing people to be found. Jay Slater's mother Debbie Duncan who has been on the island searching for her son for more than a week said that she will not lose hope that he will be found alive. The GoFundMe that was set up for Jay has surpassed £40,000 on Friday and Debbie Duncan said that the money will be used for mountain rescue, accommodation, food and expenses. Although she has also flown in, Jay's ex-girlfriend, friends, the brother, his friends, the father, neighbours and anyone else that wanted to come. They all need accommodation, flights, food, sustenance. And it just seems to me like maybe that was a waste of funds because police are not going to allow them to go off searching into the wilderness given the terrain in the area that Jay disappeared. Given the fact that they are not used to the terrain, they're not used to the weather and they could end up with another missing person. Now, Jay Slater's best friend, Brad Hargreaves, revealed that he spoke to Jay on a video call earlier on the morning he disappeared and was left with the impression he had left a pathway. He said he was on the phone walking down a road and he'd gone over a little bit. Not a big drop, but a tiny drop. And he was going down and he said, I'll ring you back, I'll ring you back like he was sliding because I think somebody else was calling him so it's unknown if he carried on back on the road or if he carried on amongst the cactuses now many of the roads over in that area seem to concertina as they go up and down the hillside it's possible that Jay Slater decided that he did not want to walk all the miles up the roads and took off onto the rocky grassy area in order to cut out some of the distance. But it's a steep, rocky area. It's full of unevenness. There's cactuses, multiple ravines, trails, and paths. Now, if you're following the Jay Slater case and you're on Instagram, this is a great channel to check out. It's called Down the Rapids. And this guy is actually over there now, and he's searching all the rugged terrain for Jay. I'm going to show you an example of the train Jay has possibly come through. There's definitely footsteps down here, 100%. There's no question about that. They're walking footsteps. They're not really sliding footsteps. So I'm trying to identify sliding footprints because footprints, I know Jay was sliding. But this is potentially what Jay could have slid down into, all this sort of, sort of material. So now you can understand why dogs can't come into this area, why drones are going to be no use, and why unless people are actually going to get in here, guys, it's not going to be much use either. So that's why I'm now scouring this area. I'm getting, getting into all of this. Let's hope that he will be found alive and he's sat watching the football somewhere. But as long as this goes on, it's not only a living nightmare for his family, it's a tiring situation for the search parties involved and everyone is concerned that he will not be found alive given the length of time that he has now been missing.